Hey there, my beautiful friends. Thank you guys so much for joining me today, man. This is going to be episode 5 of The Message. We're going to be looking at Genesis chapters 13, 14, and 15 today. And I'm so glad to be back with a new video with you guys. Next up after this will be a couple more new videos on Psalms. And uh, we'll just keep growing from there, alright guys? Let's uh, get into some prayer, by the way. My name is Rex. This is going to be the Bible in contemporary language. Again, to be abundantly clear, this should not be your only Bible. This should not be the only place that you're receiving Scripture. You should be digging into something like a King James, a New King James, a Geneva Study Bible, um, you know, uh, e even something like the uh, New Living Translation or the English Standard Version. But this is a wonderful place to receive the Bible in story format, that we could be inspired to dig into those scriptures on our own time. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we want to come be come before you today, Lord, so grateful for another day to be alive, so grateful for another day and chance to, to serve you and to grow. You are our light and the singular source of goodness. You are supreme and superior. You are all that we are not, and everything that we can attain to, Father God. You so lovingly provided the redemption arc through the blood of Jesus Christ and His work on the cross and after, and we are so abundantly grateful for the indwelling of the Holy Spirit that You have gifted us with, that we could have that mind of Christ recreated within us, that gentle teacher, that comforter that is the Holy Spirit. We pray that this video be a nourishment to us, Lord, that it drive us into your holy scriptures. I also pray that it reach the eyes and ears of anyone out there not yet at the foot of the cross, anyone out there struggling with the damnable fruits of the flesh. We would um, ask that it be able to reach the eyes and ears and hearts of anyone out there who is backslidden from their place at the foot of the cross, that they could be pulled back into the fold, Lord. We pray a hedge of protection around the lives of and a blood covering over the hearts and over the minds of children and the infirm and anyone unable to do so for themselves. We thank you for every moment of every day, Lord, every breath of air, every pump of the heart, every morsel of food, every relationship, Lord, every chance that you give us to glorify you. We are grateful. And we pray all of this in the holy, righteous, perfect, and saving name of your Son and our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, in your heavenly and eternal name we pray. Amen. Amen, guys. Let's get into this. All right. So, we're going to be starting out in Genesis 13. So Abram left Egypt and went back to the Negev, he and his wife and everything he owned and Lot still with him. By now Abram was very rich, loaded with cattle and silver and gold. He moved on from Negev, camping along the way to Bethel, the place he had first set up his tent between Bethel and Ai, and built his first altar. Abram prayed there to God. Lot, who was traveling with Abram, was also rich in sheep and cattle and tents, but the land couldn't support both of them. They had too many possessions. They couldn't both live there. Quarrels broke out between Abram's shepherds and Lot's shepherds. The Canaanites and Perizzites were also living on the land at that time. Abram said to Lot, Let's not have fighting between us, between your shepherds and my shepherds. After all, we're family. Look around. Isn't there plenty of land out there? Let's separate. If you go left, I'll go right. If you go right, I'll go left. Lot looked. He saw the whole plain of the Jordan spread out well watered. This was before God had destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Like God's garden, like Egypt, and stretching all the way to Zoar. Lot took the whole plain of the Jordan. Lot set out to the east. That's how they came to part company, uncle and nephew. Abram settled in Canaan. Lot settled in the cities of the plain and pitched his tent near Sodom. 
The people of Sodom were evil, flagrant sinners before God. After Lot separated from him, God said to Abram, Open your eyes, look around, look north, south, east, and west. Everything you see, the whole land spread out before you, I will give to you and your children forever. I'll make your descendants like dust. Counting your descendants will be as impossible as counting the dust of the earth. So, on your feet, get moving. Abram moved his tent. He went and settled by the oaks of Mamre in Hebron. There he built an altar to God. <coughs> Verse four, chapter 14. And thank you guys so much for letting me share with you. Then this, Amraphel, king of Shinar, Arioch, king of Elisar, Kedor Laomer, king of Elam, and Tidal, king of Goim, went off to war to fight Bera, king of Sidon, Bersha, king of Gomorrah, Shinab, king of Adma, Shemeber, king of Zeboim, and the king of Bela, that is, Zoar. <coughs> Sorry, guys. This second group of kings, the attacked, came together at the Valley of Sidim, that is, the Salt Sea. They had been under the thumb of Kedor Laomer for twelve years. In the thirteenth year, they revolted. In the fourteenth year, Kedor Laomer and the kings allied with him set out and defeated the Rephaim and Ashtaroth Karnaim, the Zuzim and Ham, the Amim and Shava Kiriataim, and the Horites in their hill country of Seir, as far as El Paran, on the far edge of the desert. On their way back, they stopped at En Mishpat, that is, Kadesh, and conquered the whole region of the Amalekites as well as that of the Amorites who lived in Hazazon Tamar. That's when the king of Sodom marched out with the king of Gomorrah, the king of Adma, the king of Zeboim, and the king of Bela, that is, Zoar. They drew up in battle formation against their enemies in the valley of Sidim, against Kedor Laomer, king of Elam, Tidal, king of Goim, and Raphael, king of Shinar, and Ariok, king of Elisar, four kings against five. Now the valley of Sidim was full of tar pits. When the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah fled, they fell into the tar pits, but the rest escaped into the mountains. The four kings captured all the possessions of Sodom and Gomorrah, all their food and equipment, and went on their way. They captured Lot, Abram's nephew, who was living in Sodom at the time, taking everything he owned with them. A fugitive came and reported to Abram the Hebrew. Abram was living at the Oaks of Mamre the Amorite, brother of Eshol and Anir. They were allies of Abram. When Abram heard that his nephew had been taken prisoner, he lined up his servants, all of them born in his household. There were 318 of them and chased after the captors all the way to Dan. Abram and his men split into small groups and attacked by night. They chased them as far as Hobah, just north of Damascus. They recovered all the plunder along with nephew Lot and his possessions, including the women and the people. After Abram returned from defeating Kedor Laomer and his allied kings, the king of Sodom came out to greet him in the valley of Shaveh, the king's valley. Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was priest of the high god and blessed him. <coughs> One of these days, guys, this cough is going to be all the way gone. I just know it. Blessed be Abram the, by the high God, creator of heaven and earth, and blessed be the high God who handed your enemies over to you. Abram gave him a tenth of all the recovered plunder. So, let's stop for a minute. This is the origin story here of tithing. You know, when we tithe, we give 10% to the church for the storehouses, for the community, for the church, right? And this starts with Melchizedek and Abram. So Abram gave him a tenth of all the recovered plunder. The king of Sodom said to Abram, Give me back the people, but keep all the plunder for yourself. But Abram told the king of Sodom, I swear to God, the high God, creator of heaven and earth, this solemn oath that I'll take nothing from you, not so much as a thread or a shoestring. 
I'm not going to have you go around saying I made Abram rich. Nothing for me other than what the young men ate and the share of the men who went with me, Anar, Eshol, and Mamre, and there to get their share of the plunder. Chapter 15, guys. After all these things, this word of God came to Abram in a vision. Don't be afraid, Abram. I'm your shield. Your reward will be grand. Abram said, God, Master, what use are your gifts as long as I'm childless and Eliezer of Damascus is going to inherit everything? Abram continued, See, you've given me no children, and now a mere house servant is going to get it all. Then God's message came down. Don't worry. He won't be your heir. A son from your body will be your heir. Then he took him outside and said, Look at the sky. Count the stars. Can you do it? Count your descendants. You're going to have a big family, Abram. And he believed. He believed God. God declared him set right with God. God continued, I'm the same God who brought you from Ur of the Chaldees and gave you this land to own. Abram said, Master God, how am I to know this, that it will all be mine? God said, Bring me a heifer, a goat, and a ram, each three years old, and a dove and a young pigeon. He brought all these animals to him, split them down the middle, and laid the halves opposite each other, but he didn't split the birds. Vultures swooped down on the carcasses, but Abram scared them off. As the sun went down, a deep sleep overcame Abram, and then a sense of dread, dark and heavy. God said to Abram, Know this, your descendants will live as outsiders in a land not theirs. They'll be enslaved and beaten down for 400 years. Then I'll punish their slave masters. Your offspring will march out of there loaded with plunder, but not you. You'll have a long and full life and die a good and peaceful death. Not until the fourth generation will your descendants return here. Sin is still a thriving business among the Amorites. When the sun was down and it was dark, a smoking fire pod and a flaming torch moved between the split carcasses. That's when God made a covenant with Abram. I'm giving this land to your children, from the Nile River in Egypt to the river Euphrates in Assyria, the country of the Kenites, the Kenizzites, the Cadmonites, Hittites, Perizzites, Rephaim, Amorites, Canaanites, Girgashites, and Jebusites. All right, guys. What a wonderful... Um, I just... There, there's so much fruit to be had, spiritual fruit to be had, in a book like Genesis. And... So often today, people want to treat everything as if it's allegory. Everything as if it's... Oh, you know, it's these beautiful myths to help shape humanity and all of this other... Hooey, and there's so many self-professed Christians that believe in this garbage. But the fact of the matter is, if you don't believe the, the Genesis account, which says that it's true, then why would you believe anything else? Jesus references it. He doesn't reference it as, as parable. He doesn't reference it as poetry. It's not the Songs of Solomon, right? These are core history, crucial to Jew and Gentile, crucial to us today as Christians. <clears throat> my friends, if you've stuck with me this long and put up with all of my coughing, I mean, my God, I apologize, but uh, I'd love to have you subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell as well, and you'll get a, a little beep every time I drop a new video. Seven brand new YouTube shorts, one every single morning of the week. And three brand new long format videos every week for a total of ten on the channel that I would love to share with you. Um, give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. Share it if you loved it or you just want to help the channel out. That would be great. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, video ideas, drop them in the comment section. If you have a prayer request, drop it in the comment section. If you have a witness or a testimony to the glory of God, the goodness of God, the power of the gospel message... Drop it in the comment section and go and tell it on the mountain, my friends. It is so crucial. It is such a crucial part of the Great Commission to share our testimony to what life was like before God and what it is like now. Amen. 
I love y'all so much. Father God loves you even more. Whatever you're going to do, go out there, be bold, be active, and get it for God. I'll see you in the next one.